Good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. So what do we got? This is a letter signed by Napoleon himself. That's really cool. Okay, it seems like it's from a pretty legit company. I'll give you 2,000 bucks for it, man. That's the best I can do. I didn't pay that much for it, so let's, let's do it. This is it, man. It's supposed to be an original document signed by Napoleon. So what we've got here is very clearly a replica of a very important document. <clears throat> okay. Today, we'll show you the biggest losses on Pawn Stars. I have a Gibson mandolin. Hey, Rick. Corey. I guess no one's here. The thing that makes this mandolin special is that Gibson made it. I see the sticker in there. Tells me that this is authentic. 1500 and we got a deal. 15 sounds fair. I can make a 15? profit. 15? I appreciate it. Hey, check out what I brought down today. It says the Gibson on it. Yeah. There's a couple things here. The decal, you can see where it was cut out with some scissors. On this mandolin, it would have been inlaid or silk screened. It wouldn't even have been a decal. This is fake as hell, man. This is... I hate mandolins. The fake is Wells Fargo. If there's one thing Rick Harrison is known for, it's his determination to always have items authenticated before purchasing. What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. Okay, you do have a ball and chain and a few old uh, handcuffs. I've had a ball and chain for 50 some years, son. <laughs> Don't talk about my mother that way. But for this item, Rick made an exception and it cost him. Here's my concerns. When they forged chains back in the 1800s, it was just hot welding together. You know, get it hot, beat it together. 1800s, they didn't have arc welding. It was all done by a blacksmith. That's why I have a problem with these chains. They're electrically welded. And my other big concern, never in the history of any prison did they ever have their name put on the balls. Okay, so what are you trying to say? It's fake. But the box might be real. An owner of a supposedly 19th century Wells Fargo strongbox walked into the shop, and Rick was quick to drop $450 on the strongbox before consulting an expert. Box, I'll give you 400 bucks for it. I want $1,200 for it. No, you don't. I'll give you 400 bucks for the box, and I will get one of my guys to help you carry all this stuff out. Uh, 800. I, I see me getting 600 bucks, maybe. I'd like to at least get $500 for it. I'll meet you in the middle of 450. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm pretty little filthy. When Hall Patton, their expert, came in, he dropped the balls on Rick. According to Hall, the box is a complete fantasy piece and one of the most faked items out there. Harrison Sr. twisted the knife further by saying he'd always known the box was fake, but needed something to hand over Rick's head. Okay, 19th century strong box, Els Fargo, let's take a look here. So, first things first, have you already bought this? That sounds bad, I've already bought it. I don't have good news for you, this is a complete fantasy piece. It's a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. Classic loss. The Pawn Stars love their classic cars and can sometimes go above and beyond to purchase any classic car, especially the ones with historical value. Rick proved his unending love for classic cars when he dropped over 30 grand for the car, which was found by the crew of American Pickers. Months ago, I called a couple of buddies who were great at picking stuff, but I might have gone a little bit overboard buying a 57 Chevy for my dad's 70th birthday. Rick Dale and the Count have been working overtime to get it restored, and today's the day. I just hope it's ready. Damn it, Rick. We just gotta fix something up real quick. Seems like a good purchase. Well, turns out not, as Rick and co. have to spend $70,000 to repair the car, which didn't even include fireproofing. At the end of the day, Rick spent more than double what he dropped for the car. But it was a happy ending as the restored car was gifted to the old man for his 70th birthday. Surprise! Oh my God. <laughs> happy birthday. That is one beautiful car. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. But we got cake for you. Screw the cake. Rick is a great son, but I was expecting chicken wings. He can be a cheap SOB. A letter from Napoleon. A blast from the past in the form of a document from Napoleon had Corey in a great mood to get his hands on something of historical value. If only he knew. A man walked into the shop with a signed document of Napoleon and Corey immediately believed the authenticity of the letter, especially by how old it seemed. So what do we got? This is a letter signed by Napoleon himself. That's really cool. This is the type of seal they used back then, so it does look right for the period. Okay, it seems like it's from a pretty legit company. What do you want for it? Well, you know I'm gonna say like 10 grand. He immediately dropped $2,000 for the document, and the owner agreed without hesitation. That should have been Corey's first clue that he might have bought something unworthy. 
10 grand is just way too much. You're going to have to come down quite a bit, man, to 1,500. That sounds low. How about uh, five? I'm going to have to get this reframed. It's going to be work involved. How about 4,000? I'll give you 2,000 bucks for it, man. That's the best I can do. I didn't pay that much for it, so uh, let's let's do it. 2,000? 2,000. All right, sweet, man. I'll meet you right over there. He took the document to an expert who, without mercy, explained to Corey that the document was fake. We weren't surprised when Corey threw the document in a trash can. This is it, man. It's supposed to be an original document signed by Napoleon. Well, let's take a look at what we've got. So what we've got here is very clearly a replica of a very important document. <clears throat> OK, how can you tell? A handwritten ink document from this period, we would see evidence that somebody had written this out with a pen. We would see where there are blobs of ink, and we'd see that the ink would have faded in color. Can't say that this is worth very much as a historical artifact. Yep, there goes $2,000 down the drain. The stupidest item. Chumley's excitement over a classic car didn't go down well with the rest, especially the old man. Maybe because it is the stupidest thing the old man had ever seen. Corey and Chumley went out to meet a seller of a 1986 Buick Regal car, and Chumley immediately fell in love with the classic. This is what I called you about. All right, it's a Buick Regal with a paint job. This thing is awesome. This is American luxury right here. I changed out the seats, the steering wheel, the stereo. Then we did the paint, put these traditional lowrider patterns on it. I changed the rims. Everything you can pretty much do to it is pretty much done. I think I might be in love. The seller asked for a selling price of $2,000. Corey was quick to shut down the asking price, but Chum Lee had a different plan. Here's where it's at, man, because that's you're inside the car. That's what you want to look at. Those pillow seats inside? Yeah, you know, we go way back with pillow backs and Cadillacs, so we took the Cadillac seats out and put them in the Regal. That's sweet. What do you want for the car? Give me $2,500. i am seeing a $1,000 car here. My tires are worth $1,000. You're crazy, dude. I'll go up to twelve. I won't. Nah, you got to meet me at like 2000 or something. I can do 1500 I can't go no more. Can't do it, man. I just can't do it, man. Thanks for coming down. I appreciate nah, got... it. Nice to meet No, no, no. Bought the car and eventually had to spend another extra $3,000 to fix what the old man thought was a stupid car. Chum Lee didn't agree. It's 500 bucks. You got two grand to pay the man, pay him. You want to buy yourself a car? I'll tell you right now, $2,000, if you like the car, it's not a bad deal. You ain't going to make any money off it. Shit starts up, it's a deal. All right, pop that hood. Yeah! We got a deal. Gibson Mandolin. When it comes to Chum Lee's decision to buy an antique, it's always a hit or miss situation more missed than hit, and this situation is no different. I have a Gibson mandolin. All right, well, let me call my boss over here. Hey, Rick, Corey. I guess no one's here. No, I know a little bit about these things. We're from the early 1930s. The thing that makes this mandolin special is that Gibson made it. I see the sticker in there. It tells me that this is authentic. Great. An owner of a Gibson mandolin walked into the pawn shop with the mindset of selling the mandolin for $3,000. Chum Lee eventually beat the price to half of the asking price and got himself a deal. Maybe we can make a deal. What are you trying to get for well, it? Well, I'd like to get three grand out of it if I could. Would you be willing to go uh, any less? I actually have a spending limit of a thousand bucks. I don't mind walking out of here with it. How about 1300? What do you say 1895? You're killing me, man. I'll go 14 and that's pushing the barrel. 1500 and we got a deal. 15 sounds fair. I can make a 15? profit. 15, I appreciate it. After the purchase, Chumley took the mandolin to an expert, who gently explained that the mandolin was not only fake, but also not a mandolin Gibson ever used. To the expert, it is simply fake as hell. Hey, check out what I brought down today. Mandolin, huh? I thought I'd get it all checked out by you. All right, man. It says the Gibson on it. Yeah. There's a couple things here. The decal, you can see where it was cut out with some scissors. On this mandolin, it would have been inlaid or silk screened. It wouldn't even have been a decal. And it's not even a G that Gibson ever used. And the finish is like plastic. And this pick guard is totally wrong. This is fake as hell, man. This is... I hate mandolins. Fake Indian vest. A historical value in the form of a youth Indian vest believed to have been made in the late 1890s was brought into the shop by a man who was looking for $1,800 for the vest. And in an out of character mode, Rick purchased before authentication. I have a Sioux Youth vest. Okay. I was looking to sell it. And how much were you looking for? Um, I was looking at $1,800. I'll tell you what, I'll give you $1,200 for it. Would you go $14? I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in the middle of $13. That's what I could do. All right, I'm gonna go with that. Rick was able to beat down the price to $1,300. After taking the vest to an expert, the expert confirmed that the intricacies of the beadwork on the vest were unique, but the vest wasn't from the 1890s as claimed. Unfortunately, I don't think this is from that time period. So it's definitely, it's basically a fake, it's modern. I, no, I wouldn't say it's a fake. I think it's Indian made, but it's made for sale. 
It's not fake, but it also does not have the historical value attached to it. Corey was more excited about his dad's mistake than the loss, though. Who would have thought the Indian Invest would have turned out to be real? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let him know right now. Indian Invest you bought is actually real. Really? Hey, Mark, what's up? Nope. Jimi Hendrix Guitar. A potential seller walked into the shop claiming ownership of the electronic guitar of the legendary musician Jimi Hendrix. So, what do we got here? I think there's something in here you're really gonna like to see. Okay. 1963 American-made Fender Stratocaster. Oh, to me, this is the guitar. There's something very, very special about this specific guitar. This guitar was actually played by Jimi Hendrix. Do you mind if I pick it up? No, absolutely. By all means. All right. This is the holy grail. He actually held this guitar that you now have in your hands and made wonderful music with it. Is there any pictures of him playing it on stage or anything? Or No, because he, it was exclusively played in the studio. This was his really favorite sort of recording acts. I'm going to set this down. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, a big fan of the legend, went into nerdy and fanboy mode and couldn't wait to have the guitar in the shop. And where did you get this? It was actually owned by a guy named Skip Jarrett. There was a, a studio called Juggy Sound Studio that Jimmy loved to cut in okay. up in New York. Skip was the chief engineer at Juggy Sound Studio. And after they wrapped up all the production on Band of Gypsies and all that, they gave this guitar to Skip. When he passed away, one of my business associates and I acquired the guitar. Plus I have, you know, letters signed by Jimmy's brother. I have seen where people had letters from the family. Right, right, okay. okay and it okay. turned out not to be what they said it was. Right. That's the one big thing that scares me. How much do you want for the guitar? I'd be willing to take, say, 750000 for it. I have a friend who, if this thing is real, he will know. And if not, he'll call bull****. All right, I'll be right back. Give me awesome. a few minutes. Okay, thanks, man. After bringing an expert who confirmed that the guitar was indeed original and played by the legend, and estimated the guitar to be worth a million dollars. This is... Stupid cool. I mean, <laughs> Jimmy's one of Jimmy's guitars. I want to make sure this is 100% before we start talking a lot of money. You mind if I take a look at it? By all means, that's why you're awesome. here. The tremolo bar. These are usually bent and angled up. You play the guitar upside down. You flattened a lot of these out made straight. Another thing is what they call ring wear. If you're playing the guitar like this, my wedding ring hits the guitar removes a lot of the paint. If you look at this guitar, the top side of the neck has a lot of that wear. That's from the guitar being this way. Now, Jimmy would have played it. This serial number here, this guitar has actually been documented. No doubt, this is definitely one of Jimmy's guitars. In my head, I think I know what it's worth, but what do you think? Anywhere from 750 to good auction million. Rick dropped $450,000, but the seller wanted $750,000. Rick counter with $600,000, but the seller walked away. The Pawn Stars didn't lose financially, but judging from Rick's countenance, it was a great loss for him. Let me give you 450,000. 450? For a guitar that could fetch maybe a million dollars on any day, your guy, own guy just told you that. Okay, but what uh, we Come on, 450 grand? Yeah, I'm thinking 750, man. I'll give you half a million. This guitar's worth more than that. If you want the money now, I can go 550. Knowing that it could potentially fetch a million dollars at an auction, I can't leave that much money on the table. Uh, 750, really, man. That's a that's a bottom dollar I can take for the guitar. Hey, okay, well, have a nice day. Tell me if it goes to auction, I might bid on it. Okay. <sighs> Thanks, man. Well, six. I can't do it, man. But I'll call you if I change my mind. A bad comics deal. Jumley made his usual decision of purchasing before authenticating and it backfired. I have my uncle's comic book collection. I'd like to get $2,000. I'll give you 50 bucks a box. That's 350. Can you do 500? I'm gonna do the 500. I'm gonna show everyone what an expert I really am. A lady walked into the shop with her comic book collection and was hoping to get $2,000 out of it. Chum Lee managed to beat down the asking price of 500 and got himself a deal. Find anything good? Not so much yet. What do you mean not much? There's like a bazillion comics there. I pulled about 18 books, some really cool stuff. You know, there's about 200 bucks retail. And the other couple hundred pounds of comic books are worth? Uh, about five cents a book, if you're lucky. His expert later told him about 18 of the comics are worth $200, and the other hundreds of comics in the collection are worth about five cents if they're lucky. Hey, sometimes investments are made over the long run. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button too. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video with your family and friends. See you soon.